So you've been thinking about switching to using TickTick, but you're not sure whether or not it's going to be worth all the effort. Well, I'm here to tell you that it is definitely worth using if you're a certain type of user. Uh, a little hint, it has to do with time block planning. Hi, my name is David. I'm an honor psychology student at UBC and I'm a professional interneter. I do things with technology uh, on the internet and sometimes they're useful. And I think I'm good at taking psychology things and technology things and finding ways to mush them together in ways that make them more useful than either are by themselves sometimes, sometimes. And I'm trying to find the times that are those sometimes and put them into videos. So that's what this is. This is sort of more of a technology one, but nonetheless. There's psych stuff underneath it. Uh, yeah, there is, there is. I'm not gonna talk about it direct, but it's there. If you're the type of person who's been looking for the best way to digitally implement a version of GTD or time block planning, or like me, a hybrid of both, then TickTick -tick really is a good tool that you need to see more about. TickTick -tick genuinely is the best to-do app I've found, and I've tried them all. Todoist, many years of using Todoist since back in 2012. Things 3 used for about a year at one point. I use Apple Reminders for some things. I tried OmniFocus, it didn't really stick for me, and I've tried some of those minimalist ones, but the big ones that people use quite a lot, I have used them, and TickTick -tick is better, at least for me. And again, if you're like me, maybe it'll be better for you too. In this video, I'm going to put TickTick -tick up against Apple Reminders, just because it's kind of the most basic version possible of a to-do app. It's low tech, completely unsuited to our purposes. I'm not gonna do a direct comparison with Todoist and things in this video, but the, the key feature that I'm gonna emphasize in TickTick -Tick is unique to TickTick, -Tick, or at least much better implemented in TickTick, -Tick, and that's its ability to facilitate time block planning. So the first reason, like I was alluding to, is TickTick -tick is much better for time block planning. If you're not familiar with time block planning, it's a system put forward by Cal Newport. Again, you know, it's not entirely novel. Things like this have existed for a while before. It's like keeping a diary and planning it out. It has some overlap with bullet journaling, but he explains it really well. I'll link to resources where he talks about the general idea behind it in more detail, but he does it physically. He does it with a notebook. And I used to do it his way, like that, but I am a digital boy. I like being able to have my things synced across devices in case I don't take that notebook. I like the notebook too, but I end up coming back to the digital. So I needed to find a way to do that. I've tried ways of doing it with just using a calendar app. I've tried ways of doing it the physical way that he does it. And then I tried to force Todoist to do it by kind of like plotting out times and syncing it with a calendar. It didn't work well because you couldn't set a discrete start and end date for a task. You could only set a length of time for a task and that wasn't enough to do this kind of fluid, flexible time block planning like Cal does on a physical notebook. TickTick -tick lets you do that. You can take a task, plot it out in a calendar view over time and then flip back to task view and see it again like that. I'll show you really quick what I mean. So you can see in my calendar here, I have a couple of different tasks. Say tomorrow, I'm planning to finish this exercise, uh, which is a YouTube exercise. You can see I have it plotted out here from four to 5 p.m. I could change the time, make it shorter or longer. I could drag it to another day really easily. And I can switch my view, go to tomorrow. And you can see in my plan for tomorrow, it's there as well within the YouTube channel can also do it in a time-based view tomorrow and you can see it's over there too and then just like that with a keyboard command I can switch back to the calendar view and then switch back to the task view and back to the calendar view and back to the task view that's cool right and other apps sort of do this maybe some have caught up by now but this is the best I've seen an app do it the reason why it's really important to be able to adjust the start and end times as you go is because a central idea within how Cal Newport does his time block planning is the ability to treat the start of the day plan as sort of a plan A that you know is not going to go exactly as you hope it will. You go into it knowing that you're going to have to move these blocks around. And you can do that really easily in a physical notebook. He just scratches them out and he writes a new block next to it after having charted out the time. If you watch this video, that'll make a little bit more sense. But if you're already familiar with time block planning, you get what I mean. Say I reach four o'clock and it's like, oh, I don't have time to do that. 
you can drag it down. Or you might realize it's not going to happen tomorrow at all. So I'm going to move it over here to Saturday when I have uh, left some kind of buffer room. Another neat thing about TickTick is you can integrate your calendars in with it. So you can see here, this is a shift I have uh, that's synced in from a Google Calendar. Uh, you can use an Apple Calendar too. You could sync in multiple calendars. I happen to keep all of my synchronous events in one calendar. And so I sync those in. And so when I start a new week, those spots are already filled out. So I'm not gonna book tasks in during that time. You definitely can't do that in Apple Reminders. TickTick also has much better quick capture than Apple Reminders. Apple Reminders has the advantage if you can do voice capture through Siri, although you can now also do that into your TickTick using the trick I show in that other video. But TickTick has much better text capture. Todoist and Things 3 also have a similar capture, and so I would call it a match between the three and there, but let me show you this really quickly. You open it with a key command, and then it opens this little box, and it would do it on top of whatever else you're doing. So say I was reading this article, and I was further down in actually reading it, and I, oh, I am reading something in this paragraph that reminds me of something I want to do. And so I would hit the key command to bring it up, and then I could type whatever it is. So maybe it's, uh... and just like that, I could just press enter, and that goes into my inbox in TickTick. You can also do even more with it. Say I was further down, and I thought of something else I wanted to do. I could say, and then you can also do these like sort of quick add-ons to tag the way the task is gonna go. So if you do this, you can put which project it's gonna go in. Academic develop, academia development. And you can also say when you wanna do it. Let's say I wanted to do it tomorrow. You can even add tags. Um, I'm gonna say intent. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this. So now I've added a project, a due date or a due date depending on how you want to use those, and then a tag. And if I press enter, now it's going to go not into my inbox, but into the project list for academia development and into the tomorrow list. Very cool. Again, Todoist and Things 3 can do that as well, but Apple Reminder can't really do that as well. It has a bit of this type of natural language processing if you just start typing in a task where it can recognize dates to some extent and maybe some project kind of stuff. But in my experience, it's been a little bit inconsistent compared to these other apps. Third thing is the smart recognition is better in TickTick -tick compared to Apple Reminders. It's about on par again with Things 3 and Todoist, but certainly better than in Apple Reminders. Apple Reminders has just been quite inconsistent for me with the natural language processing, but it's pretty consistent in TickTick. -tick. You just got to figure out the shortcuts that help you tag the projects, dates, and the hashtags. All that said, voice capture into Apple Reminders works really well. Again, we can sort of take advantage of that for TickTick -tick as well using the workaround that I detail in that other video, but it's really nice to just get stuff right into Reminders itself too. And so what I've ended up doing is I just keep some lists and Reminders, really basic stuff that isn't going to need a lot of detail. The main one I use in Apple Reminders is I keep my grocery list there. So when I want to add to that, instead of saying, hey Siri, remind me to X, I say, Hey Siri, add bananas to the grocery list. And then it does that. And I have a list in my reminders called groceries. See it there. And it has the things that I've added this way. It's gotta be the most exciting thing that's ever happened around here. That's it. This is just a quick video to give you a brief overview of why I think it's worth paying more attention to TickTick -tick and checking it out. There's lots of other videos that detail kind of getting on board with it and learning how to use it. You can check some of those out. I might make a few about some specific things I like in TickTick -tick down the line. Anyway, if you are on the fence about TickTick -tick and you found any of this convincing, do check it out. Thank you for watching. Do like and subscribe. Uh, and please do ask me any questions if this brings up for you. This whole video was inspired by a comment on one of my uh, videos from a couple weeks ago. I'm really liking getting to talk to people in a way, getting to respond to people's comments at least in the comment section. So yeah, if, if you have any questions you want to ask, do ask me. Yeah, maybe, maybe I can make a video about something else you're curious about. So just let me know.